Hello and welcome to Bottom Line. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is in Assam for a crucial three-day visit. While the Union Home Minister has a packed schedule for the next 48 hours with key events lined up, the focus is also on a first-of-its-kind crucial meet with chief ministers and DGPs of the Northeast states on narcotics control. While well, we have seen a massive push by more than one state, by multiple states in the region to tackle the narcotics menace in the last couple of years, has the MHA and the centre now made up its mind to deal a decisive blow to narco trade and terror? What is the significance of this meet with CMs and DGPs? Is this the beginning of a big coordinated effort to ensure narcotics control in the region? And has the time finally come for states to come under one banner, put up a united fight to tackle the narcotics menace? These are the questions that we are asking tonight. To discuss this and much more, I'm being joined by Mr. Farooq Ahmed, DSP, CID Assam, who is in the studios in Guwahati with us. Welcome, sir, to Bottom Line. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Sunit Newton, former spokesperson of Ministry of Defence and PRO, PRO Manipur, who has served in Manipur uh, extensively, is joining us uh, from South Africa. Uh, Dr. Sandeep Hanse, Chief Functionary of State Level Coordinating Agency Drug Prevention for the State of Assam and Meghalaya, will also be joining us in the studios in Guwahati. From Manipur, from Imphal, I'm being joined by Dr. Jayanta Kumar, anti drugs activist. Uh, very warm welcome to all of you, gentlemen. Uh, if I can uh, come to Mr. Ahmed first. Well, uh, Considerable success, would you say, in the war on drugs in the last uh, one year? How do you rate that? Before you come to the main issue of this very crucial meet tomorrow. Yeah, uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, first of all. Uh, after the new government uh, which has come to power in last years, uh, the war on drugs was intensified and it has, you know, been reflected in the actions, in the recoveries of drugs, the cases that has already been registered. Uh, uh, if I can quote that data, in 2020, uh, 20, we had around 890 cases, and in 2021, we had 20 to 71, 2000 to 71 numbers of cases has been registered. It's around 250 times, I mean, percentage-wise, 250 percentage increase. 250 and percent increase yes, in the recoveries. Yes, yes, in, in, in number of cases registered. And recovery number of cases. Yeah. And simultaneously, the recoveries has also been increased in all the key drugs that has been, you know, available in Assam, like uh, heroin, uh, cannabis, and methamphetamine. Every drugs, in you know, recovery of every drug has increased substantially. And it can be, you know, termed as a success of Assam police. What do you attribute this success to the 250% rise in number of cases. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that uh, a, a bit later. Uh, but uh, going to Lieutenant Colonel Retired uh, Sunit Newton, uh, well, it's easier said than done, isn't it? War against drugs, narcotics control, sounds good, coordinated effort and uh, joint fight, but uh, we know what we are up against, isn't it? Uh, good evening, Mr. Nagarun. Firstly, I am thankful to, uh, for getting me into this show which, uh, and a subject which is very close to my heart. Pleasure. pleasure. I must congratulate Mr. Ahmad for the figures which he has uh, just spelled out on the screen. Well, uh, if you look at the menace in our country as a whole and uh, Northeast in particular, it's not a new thing. Uh, we have an enabling act, NDPS Act of 1985 which uh, the country and the parliament accepted after a lot of resistance. In spite of that, you have seen that the proliferation of drugs across the spectrum of has increased manifold. You can uh, see so many reports, uh, United Nations reports, National Survey report in the past few years. Now, uh, uh, the NDPS was formed, uh, was passed in 1985. That passed in 1985. That became an act somewhere, I think, in the end of it. Right. And after that, uh, the formation of the Narcot Control Bureau, somewhere in the first quarter of six. The war on drugs has been a. But we have to look at it. We have to look at the reason why specific Northeast Persia as a region. 
has been targeted by the drug cartels more than any other place. You can count Punjab, you can call the Gujarat the port. Gujarat the Mandra port has possible. become a center now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to dwell upon that because that can, you know, we can talk for three hours, four hours on this subject. But if we just try to limit ourselves to the geography and that is the northeast, you see historically, uh, right from the 1950s, 1960s, drugs and insurgencies have run parallel. Now we have to understand the relation. Uh, I, I will not like in America because that's again a subject in itself. But coming to Northeast, you see, uh, firstly, it is located perfectly, you know, it cannot be helped. The Golden Triangle, uh, forming of a, uh, formed by Myanmar, Laos, Thailand. And the easy access of these militant groups also, along with the drug, to move in the drug from this region, for this region and also to the, uh, uh, to the other part of the country. So that means the region has a strong support for, you know, the drug routes, safe supply lines, and also, uh, not only, uh, now this we are only talking about the legislative and the, you know, security enforcement point, but we also have to look at the which which are illegal and the drugs have propagated and very adversely affected the youth. And it's not only the drug, it's also the other side effects. A very high prevalence of HIV rate, a very high prevalence of HIV, hepatitis B. So I would only request a remark while we are discussing on this subject to look at it very holistic. Absolutely. Uh, if I can go to Dr. Jayanta Kumar here. Well, uh, Dr. Jayanta Kumar, Manipur. Manipur, of course, is being seen as the route, the route through which uh, drugs narcotic uh, contraband items are entering are going to other parts of the northeast and we know the reason uh, we have an unfenced border with Myanmar uh, the, the, the free movement regime which allows uh, free movement till up till 10 to 15 kilometers uh, and 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 despite all the efforts of course there has been a war on drugs declared by the Manipur government, the ambulancing government, uh, in, 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 in the last couple of years or so. But despite everything, uh, Manipur still remains the hotbed as far as drugs and narco terror is concerned. Are we heading in the right direction as far as Manipur is concerned? Are we being able to uh, at least take on the menace, if, if I may say? Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult job, no doubt. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I think I am audible now. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. See, one thing we have to be very clear when you do a war of drugs. See, my panelist was talking about the big seizure. Manipur also is having a lot of increased seizure in the last five, six months, five, six years. But even if the seizure is high, if our people taking drugs also is simultaneously increasing, that seizure has no meaning. Even though he may be seizing a lot, but more people are also in drugs, then it doesn't serve any purpose. The bottom line of any war on drugs is that our boys reduce taking drugs. And unless that is achieved, then war on drugs, the goal of war on drugs is not very achieved. That is what I want to say. It's not about seizure. You may say, you may seize a lot of drugs, but simultaneously, if our boys are taking more drugs, then a seizure is no mean. So ultimately, it, the bottom line is is our boys reduced in taking drugs? And unless if that is not reduced, then no amount of seizure has any meaning, number one. Number two, if you look at the national survey on 2019 done by the Ministry of Government of India, the, the increase of drug consumption by the young population in the Northeast has risen by more than 50%. Earlier, it was only confined to the state of Mizoram, Nagaland, and Manipur. Now you look at Assam, you look at Arunachal, you look at Meghane, it's all spread with drugs. You know? So it, in this, and the danger is that we are a very small population state except Assam. Manipur is very small, uh, Mizoram is very small, and it's a very small population state. So having 1,000 drug addict in a small population of 30 lakh is very, very difficult. This is number one. Now, if you look on the war on drug in Manipur, 
our chief minister is giving lot of effort and we are very very successful on the supply reduction side so when you take up a war on drug it has to be both one on the supply side and one on the demand side so in the supply side we are being very, very successful the poppy, poppy cultivation has been very much reduced village chief has come out and said that we will not cultivate poppy our chief minister is taking the mla along with him to see that poppies are never planted again then village then alcohol police also has become very active so on the supply side i think we are doing very very well in manipur but unfortunately in the demand reduction side we are not very very successful now when once the demand is there the supply automatically comes so if you don't do something to reduce the demand absolutely then more and more all and drugs are coming absolutely so we are not, uh, so the problem with the government is that they only focus on the supply side you look uh, i will give you one example what the survey is saying is that 20% of the population is taking alcohol every day that means in 30 population means 6 lakh of people are taking alcohol every day in manipur and if 1 uh, liter of uh, alcohol is taken by 4 people it means that we require 1 lakh liter of alcohol every day now how much can you seize you know that's so, that's uh, that, these are very you know interesting uh, points and statistics uh, i would no. like uh, dr sandeep hanse uh, chief functionary state level Co coordinating agency drug prevention for state of assam and meghalaya well demand and supply uh, you can seize you can you can seize you can recover drugs but unless and until uh, you cannot curb the demand the drugs will always uh, keep on finding the customers and keep on uh, passing through the porous borders but then again when you say reducing the demand reducing the demand just in one state is not enough you can reduce the demand in manipur it's adjoining and it's not about the state it's about the entire nation it it it, it could be a transit route so it's the, the the war on drugs has to be a joint effort isn't it right right so uh, thank you at first for calling me out in the platform so uh, my experiences working for last 10 years in this subject of drug demand reductions uh with what i want to express right now what what i have observed that the uh, government after the survey national survey the central government they have realized that it is a big problem the entire states not only assam yeah. northeast but entire state in india they have got the problem the ratio is little bit there are variation of ratios of popul prevalence population but uh spe specially speaking on the part of assam and northeast the national survey of uh, dr jayanta sar has spoken that it says that in assam specific drugs means like there are a lot of substances are there which people go for abuses out of which we want to focus more on drugs drugs means like opioid drugs which are very common in assam that is the heroin like we are adjacent to the uh, golden triangles from the borders of myanmar from various states nagaland manipur and mizoram it comes and the assam is now the transit point from there it comes to assam and goes to various as a, as a eastern states in india so right now the cesar is there which i also agree with dr jayanta sir like in assam like we have found that many crores of drugs are seized in some months and some years we have observed that many of them has been sent for ndps under the ndps act to the custody so now that also very 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 less in amount comparing the demand our demand which the national and services big seizures big seizures even reported from areas of barak valley which were earlier unheard of yeah. uh, from 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 karimganj from hailakandi yes. from kachar uh, which were unheard of earlier that's also surprising uh, yeah but uh, but my my uh, calculation which the national survey gives is like 1% of the population of assam 0.9 almost 1 takes the drugs every day that means like because what we, we have been working with the drug demand we ask the drug use population most of the people they use the drugs every day because it is their demand they have to use it at any cost so now if the population of assam is one person is using the but the population in meghalaya it is two percent of them uses drugs six percent of them population uses drugs in arunachal pradesh it is almost the this is based on percent. i'm sorry this is based on which survey you're talking national about national survey on accident pattern of drug use last it is the most okay. important survey which we have right now in, in our okay. 
and it's like uh, in our uh, means like uh, report. So now I want to say like the population almost three crores three lakhs population in Assam use drugs. That means like it is almost near about the course of drugs reaches the value of Assam every day as per the calculation exactly how much reach but it is their demand almost the three means like hundred crores of drug demand is there every day for the only the for the state of Assam so the need is there to some extent there are thousands of people involved in these businesses so definitely these things are coming out but the scissor is okay fine we are we are very much proud that the department, home department and the narcotics bureau and all the paramilitary forces they are jointly working on this but their demand is there in Assam just specifically speci speaking on our part right now last uh, one, one month back the minister the social justice minister Mr. Pizus Hazurika sir he has visited some of the centers in Assam at Guwahati basically yeah. so what we have found that inquiry was there how many centers are there in Guwahati right now there are more than 70 80 centers are there at guwahati where 500 uh, means like up, up to around 2000 drug users are right now residing for their treatment and rehabilitation programs in the cities of guwahati only so the government centers are very few only oh, we will we will we'll, 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 we'll come to that uh, a bit later in the discussion right. uh, mr ahmed well success has been there as you mentioned 250% uh, rise in cases uh, arrests have been made uh, you know, hundreds of arrests over 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 four thousand, if yeah. I am not mistaken, uh, people arrested. But do you think st it's still a, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the battle against drugs? And what are the primary challenges that you still face uh, when it comes to, uh, to narco control? Um, uh, see, uh, what I would like to say is that this is a long drawn battle, and Absolutely. I think no uh, that. we are yeah. very much in the battleground. And there are you know three pronged strategy to curb the many of the drug and first is demand reduction i think the whole society has a part to do it and the second part is supply reduction i think the law enforcement agencies especially the police uh, state police and uh, narcotic control bureau and uh, they have a very you know huge part to play in this uh, portion and another one is harm reduction uh, sir was talking about that rehabilitation center so uh, the supply reduction part and uh, we are working very hard to reduce the supply and all the seizures the cases that has been registered is the proof that we are trying very hard to reduce the supply and i agree with the other panelists that uh, the reduc demand reduction do is to be yeah do you feel that has had an impact sorry to interrupt you do you feel yeah. that has ha that has had an impact i mean uh, from your sources do, do, uh, has there been any sort of panic among the you know, drug traders, dealers, yeah, definitely. any, any Def input, you know, is this impacting? Of course, yeah, the price will go up. The yeah. price will go up for those who want their dose of the contraband substance every day. So even if that is done, that is also, we can say, term it as a success in a way. See, definitely, I would like to mention one point, one legal point. There is one section called 68F under NDPS Act. So under this section, you can, you know, freeze the properties of the drug dealers. So what we are doing that we are not only arresting the drug dealers, not only sending them to the jails, we are also freezing their properties. And you will uh, feel very good, I think, till now in Assam only we have freezed around uh, property amounting to around 90 crores. So see, whenever we freeze some properties of drug dealers, you know, it sends a very, you know, firm message to the drug dealers that no matter how much you earn, you know, trafficking illegal drugs, at the end of the day, Police will freeze your assets and you will have nothing in your hands. So this is a very good, I think, uh, effort the Assam Police is doing. And till now, around, I have already mentioned that around 90 assets amounting to around 90 crores have been, freeze, uh, have been you know, frozen. And this is, I think, sending a very well, uh, very good message, I think very stern message to the drug traffickers. And another, another point is there. Um, there is another act, uh, Pete NDPS Act. I think very few know about this act. This is prevention of illegal, uh, illicit trafficking in NDPS, that Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. And uh, in that act, you know, you know, under that act, police officers have powers to, uh, for preventive detention of uh, one year. So if someone is doing illegal trafficking of drugs and uh, police has no evidence, you know, or sometimes you know it's very difficult to gather evidence against him but you know that he is trafficking in drugs so police has the power to detain him under preventive detention for one years 
and till now in Assam you will feel good that we have detained around 35 drug traffickers under this pt Peace Act. So, this is also another… Yes, but uh, also uh, the action. temptations are very high mm. when you are in this business, uh, the business of mm. narco trade. Uh, Dr. Jayanta Kumar, when we talk about reducing demand, where should we st where should we start? Where should we start to stop drug abuse? Should we should we monitor the schools and colleges, the neighborhood kirana shop, uh, the neighborhood club for youngsters? Where does it start? Where does it start? And can we identify those places where we can you know keep a strict eye on? Can can monitor things to ensure that they do not begin early? It's a very good question. And there lies a solution to the problem. See, I have to tell you one thing. If you talk of, talk of NBPS Act, the conviction rate in the NBPS Act is not even one person. So that means if hundred people are caught by the police, not even one is convicted. It is below one person. And the conviction will take after ten years. So if you think NBPS Act is a solution to the problem, then I think we need to study better. The, you have asked a very pertinent question. You see, in the survey itself, it is shown that 99% of the boys start taking before the age of 14. So it means that people are taking drugs at the school age. So school is a very good place for intervention of drug addicts, how people can prevent from drugs. So all the governments must involve drug as a curriculum in their school, number one. Schools should, should be motivated that it is a drug-free environment. You will find today, if you go to a school, the lady teachers are taking pawn. Some, you know, teachers will become alcoholic. So all these no, things. Those are, yes, have. those are there. Uh, probably, mm. probably also the role of the school comes. I remember when we were in school, uh, yes. I was uh, born and brought up in Shillong, mm. and then uh, we weren't even allowed to go to the school gates during school arts. We couldn't buy our packet of chana. Uh, from uh, from outside the school during st school hours. That's how strict it was. We could no, only use the school today, canteen or today, bring our own uh, lunch boxes. That's it. And that's how the schools used to keep a close monitor because it's 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 some elements who hover around the schools and institutes uh, who who lure the youngsters, and that is something uh, that needs to be looked into. And usually, drug abuse starts very early, very early, mind you. Uh, uh, I just want to do, tell you one. Thing. In 2015, we did a survey only for Manipur. And one of the questions asked to the young boys was, where did you take drugs? And 33% said they take drugs in the school, especially in the morning. This is very good answer to everyone. So school, especially those who have boarding, it has become a place of taking drugs. It was not during your time and my time. School was a temple during those times. Now it is a place for taking drugs, especially boarding schools. The second question, they said that 26% said they take drug at home. Why this is happening? Because in your time, my time, it was a big joint family where we all live together. But today, you see, we have become very commercialized, small, small building with small, small family working, leaving our children free when we go for work. And it becomes a drug trading place. So if you look at money or in the place, School has become very, very, day. I can tell you in Assam, how many boarding probably is risk of taking drugs. So, school even is not safe now. You, houses are not safe. Families are taking drugs. Mm. Families are would you, would you Would you like to add something uh, to that, Dr. Hanse? The observations. Uh, like, uh, as per your uh, point on the schools, uh, how the schools mm. education and schools platform can so where does drug abuse start you know can we identify those and probably uh, seal those gaps that's what uh, my question was uh, firstly i want to say that uh, the awareness drug awareness in the schools curriculum subject was not there uh, from the very beginning now i think it will come uh, within some few months because the government has already implemented the central government has implemented one project that is called novasetna the school curriculum the drug sector would be there at first it will implement all the government school in pen india Later, they will state, start in private also. So the education department, the central education department and social justice... Is drug order. abuse a reality in our schools, in, 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 in many of our schools? Your observation? 
Like I'm not are, saying that children are taking drugs inside schools, but yes, school-going kids are also taking. Is that a reality? Your observation. To, 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 to some extent, we can say it is reality, but uh, but uh, ratio might vary from places to places. But uh, in Guwahati, especially because we are working more in the city of Guwahati, in Guwahati we find that many of the uh, juveniles, that, like who are below 18, we are, when they are in schools and higher secondaries, they come to rehabilitation there. When we inquire to them, treating for several years, we have found that uh, some they have st uh, the peer pressure, the school, their friends only, the, that is the school students, the peer pressures, they have uh, uh, influenced them to take the drugs. That is the first the history of their drug use. So definitely it has got uh, some impact. So now the probably the school education programs will have some reduction uh, impact, I, I do believe, because it, will, it is coming up within some few months, the school education curriculum. Never said Absolutely. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Newton, uh, do you think the border fencing with Myanmar that is pending, once that is completed, that will help in the battle against drugs? Definitely. Uh, see, Mr. Naburan, uh, what you are saying, it may help to an extent. But you see what we have to understand that the technology that is being used by the drug appears. That's actually gone much beyond than these physical things. We do not talk of the dark web. We do not talk of payment without any paper trip, where point uh, currency is all paid. So actually, what said that if we fence, but the terrain is such, you cannot really, you know, in every gap. Number one. So it has to be a very holistic approach where there has to be synergy. And one thing also I would take today, the word which you think war against drugs, war against this, war against that. See on this you cannot have a war. You have to have a movement for this. Like the co about which resonated uh, with me very profoundly. See, you just cannot say that they give data, in last so so many people who are and and so much. See, these are all these are all data, sir. Let us be realistic. Let us be holistic up. Where the society play a very major role. Now, making a statement, which in my view, little loose, peripheral. School children are using drugs, be possible, why not maybe in one of the schools. But we cannot just give up because the moment you say that, and then you have to substantiate that. That cool. So okay, I'm not going at there. The point is we have to standardize our operations. The operations have to take everybody on the security agencies, the Assam Rifle, the Bureau, the state polices. The, the arm of this, then the civil side. Now we have to understand one. Northeast is a region where the women play a important role, you know, in shaping up of the country. I, I, I think we all agree on that. And we, the, the women groups have to coordinate that, where they have to create. Now, now we talk okay, we'll going and getting the school. So it has to be a very and certainly what you said about uh, fencing the borders and not only the, you can have a lot of surveillance, electronic surveillance, you can have places, uh, you can have C target great. But these are all we all have to go move in a very parallel and strategized way. Then only you can hold drugs to an extent. It, 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 Continue, you know, Absolutely, but at the same time, at the same time, uh, Colonel Newton, we also have to ensure that there is no easy access, right? That is the job of the authorities. Yes, exactly. curtailing demand, making, creating awareness is all fine, but there exactly. cannot be easy access. We'll just try to uh, reconnect, fix the audio there. We're facing some audio issues with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Newton. We'll just quickly fix that. We'll come back to you in just a minute, uh, uh, Mr. Newton. Uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed, again, the money involved. 
the money involved in drug trade is just too big. Sometimes, uh, even in the last couple of years, we have had seizures in Manipur, recoveries in Manipur, where drugs worth a thousand crores, five hundred crores, were seized. That too in the same year. Too much money involved, and when there's too much money involved, there's a lot at stake. Yes, uh, does that make things difficult? And in Assam. Now, this is something that you may choose to answer. It's totally up to you. Uh, I know you have uh, your own uh, uh, issues, definitely. But it's, 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 it's sometimes difficult, not easy at all, to wage a war against drugs. There's, there are pressure from several quarters. Of course, uh, of late, be it in Assam, we have had a coordinated effort under the leadership of Chief Minister Hemant Bishy Sharma, who right after taking charge has had announced this war on drugs. In Manipur, too, Chief Minister Ayan Biren Singh is leading the war on drugs. But despite that, when there is thousands and thousands of crores of money involved, definitely there are uh, issues and challenges that you have to face on a daily basis. Yeah, definitely the money involved is very, very, you know, large. But uh, as I have already mentioned that we have already frozen around rupees 90 crore uh, uh, of property of the drug, illegal drug traffickers. So uh, this is kind of deterrent factor. I don't say that it will completely stop the traffic of drugs, but this will definitely act as a deterrent because you know the drug trafficker will think someone who is uh, you know willing to join the drug trafficking will think that no matter how much I earn, end of the day, my, if I get caught, my property will be frozen and I won't have anything in my hands. So this is definitely a deterrent factor, and we are using uh, we are using that deterrent factor in very effective way. And uh, we will use that in near future as well in our fight against the drug. Uh, Dr. Jayanta Kumar, well, in most cases, if we talk about states like Manipur and even in parts of Assam, uh, if we interact with the local people, the local people, I'm not talking about a local police station or the local authorities, if we interact with the locals, uh, the villagers, the residents of a town, Almost half the town knows where certain things are available, where contraband items are available, and that is almost an open secret. Uh, so, again, again, does it all boil down to the society's <coughs> will, the collective will of the people to say no to drugs and, and, and to ensure that their wards, their children do not get into it? Uh, you have said that you, your question is very, very, uh, very, very elite, and this is what I wanted to say. If you want to control drugs or alcohol, it should be a people's movement. It cannot be a government movement. Government should help the people to create that movement. I'll give you one example. What the government has done is that they, they try to make the movement, but it, is, it should be a people's movement and the government should facilitate the movement. I'll give you one example. Manipur is a dry state. Tell me one person in Manipur who says that I could not get alcohol today because it is a dry state. Tell me one. And the seizure of drug in Manipur has gone so high. But tell me one drug addict who says that I could not get drug today because police has seized all the drugs, so I did not get today drug. I don't even know that drug is seized because it is available in plenty. So this is one thing. So it should be a people's movement. It should not be something where the government should Think they can do alone. The police should help the law. Suppose, you know, in your locality, one house is joining, uh, uh, selling alcohol, but he gets the protection of the local people. Then what will the police do? He can't comfort all the local people. So the local people has to be taken into confidence where the police will facilitate the process. And it's only then, you see, drug will become, or alcohol, will be controlled in a, in a population. Otherwise, you know, it will be very, very difficult because you know, you, in Assam, it is a, not a dry state, still, still people are drinking. We are dry state, but we are drinking more than Assam. And nobody has said uh, we could not get any alcohol because we are dry state. This is why the state are uh, compla contemplating the idea of making a, selling alcohol again. So, like you have said, we have to make it a people movement where the police and the, and the people work together and then the, you know, the people will cooperate with the police so that there is no drug or alcohol seller in the locality. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to afford a few handful of but, police. But again, we, can we just blame the people? Can I, can I add one yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Go ahead, Mr. Ahmed, uh, and uh, also yeah. uh, left. Uh, Dr. Jayanta uh, Kumar sir said just that uh, it should be a people's movement, and we do really agree with that point. And for to associate the people in the fight mm -hmm. against the drugs, we have you know opened an app, Drugs Free Assam app. The with the help of NIC, we have developed an app, and the app is available in the Play Store, and we have a very good rating for the app. And anyone who wants to share some information regarding storage of drugs, illegal trafficking of drugs, consumption of drugs, he can anonymously, can you know, anonymously yeah, right? report okay. uh, through that app. And uh, we have till date, I think we last year, <coughs> December, we have opened the app for the people. And till now, we have received around 165 complaints. And based on that complaint, we have received uh, registered around 10 cases. We have arrested more than uh, 15 people and drugs. Uh, or through which I think 15 or 20 lakhs we have ceased till that. So this is the you know initial stage and the people are participating and I hope uh, uh, people will get to know about our app and they will participate in large numbers. But again, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Newton, do you think the rot runs deeper? We cannot just say it's the people's responsibility. Can we deny the nexus in certain, alleged nexus I should say in, 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 in certain cases between the drug mafia between in, in Manipur, for instance, uh, we have had several uh, policemen, cops arrested for carrying contraband items or facilitating uh, the transport of drugs. So, can we just blame the people? Uh, Mr. Nobran, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, if you permit me, before I come to the question to ask me, I want to talk on what which is I may sound very rich and at the cost of you may be called very heavily by people. Firstly, let us get to this out of this mindset of you know, combining alcohol and drugs. You see, this is, uh, I'm sorry, I need to understand. I have spent so much time in I have not, uh, Manipur is a dry state, Pakistan is a dry state, Alpha is a dry state. We are so hypocrite about it. In spite of being dry, we find alcohol everywhere. So, firstly, let us get out instead of finding these two things. Drugs are uh, ecotropic substances which are bad all over the world. Alcohol is not. If con consumed in uh, moderate, okay, too much on that. Now, coming to the question uh, of the nexus, such kind of activity which affects the world. It's not just affecting the East or it's affecting the yeah, it's, it's a global problem. It's a global problem like, uh, like you know, uh, global warming. Because it's killing generations. And it's not only, it's not only the effect, direct effect of the substance on the consumer, but around the people are the families, parents. So now coming to the next part of it, None of such business, none of such illegal activity right without the proper uh, I will use the word allegedly because that is you know, regulatory. But we all know how it works, how the system works. Because if there is no support, there is no nexus with the so-called uh, you know black sheets in particular agencies, this kind of a thing cannot thrive. So this goes without saying that there has to be a next start from the point right to the crossing, uh, you know, point from where it crosses. How it travels? Because see, northeast you don't know, northeast you have very limited access. You don't have too many roads. You don't have track. If a person has to move. He enters from Mure and has to get out of Manipur. He has two or three limited access to get out. Either he has to go through the. Uh, the go into Nakhon, or he has to go by you know, get into this uh, valley area. So uh, they can be trapped and be trapped very easily, provided there is a. Now, in the NDPS Act, there is strict punishment from one year to two years to the violators. If I am not wrong, Staff may correct me. But I am not in touch with the latest. But that is what broadly I, because the act has been amended its uh, uh, passage 98. There should also be very strict 
punishment for the collaborators. Now, I'm sure the department, when they can tell, uh, you know, the perpetrators, whether it's the NCP or the armed forces or the forces, they have their own punishment. But they should have some centralized, you know, demonstrative punishment to perpetrators. Because if these people are not facilitated, I'm very sure that this will cut, get, cut down to a very large extent. Point, point taken. Very, very significant points made there. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Ahmed, tomorrow, coming back to the crucial CMs and DGPs meet with Indian Home Minister Amit Shah, of course, a first of its kind meet. Uh, is currently, how is the coordination between the police departments of the states, interstate coordination? Uh, is it smooth or is it from case to case basis? Because war on drugs needs, uh, you know, seamless coordination. Right. Seamless coordination right. within the region and beyond. It's, it it right. doesn't end here. Right. Okay. It can go as far as to the south or Gujarat or Punjab or Haryana or mm. any part of the country. So is that coordination happening? Is it building? Has it, has it uh, moved towards the right direction in the last one year? What is your observation? Quickly? Yes, I think so. Uh, there is a very well coordinated, you know, uh, mechanism. The Joint Coordination Committee Northeast is there and Joint Coordination Committee for other parts of the country is there. Uh, so, uh, this is an umbrella organization kind of, all the organizations, state polices and the central organizations like NIA and or the armed, for, uh, I mean paramilitary forces, armed forces, they come under this umbrella coordination body. And I think uh, the coordination is not an issue, we are very, uh, you know, the coordination is going very smoothly and basically the NCB is taking the lead in coordinating with all the agencies. So, I will say that the coordination is very smooth. There is no issue with coordination, I guess. Are things moving in the right direction again, uh, Dr. Hanse, as far as the war on drugs is concerned? And of course, uh, when we talk about reducing the demand, is there hope? Is there hope or are there promises merely on paper? Your observation, honest observation. Uh, right now, uh, the central government, uh, they have uh, formulated one program that is called National Action Plan for Drug Demand Reduction. Pan India, it is going simultaneously. Many new programs has been coming up. Now the earlier the, the national survey, this is like only 272 dis vulnerable districts are there out of the more than 700 districts in India. Now they have in the very beginning last two years they focus on that vulnerable district. Right now, the all the under the deputy commissioners of all the districts in India, the government of India has planned that the district drug de addiction center should be created very soon. Now they have uh, asked all the deputy commissioner to set up the district drug de addiction centers under the government of India. And many of the private de addiction centers are there. The many of the states, they does not have their own policies. That is why in Assam also, speaking to Assam, all the states has been asked. So Assam state has also planned that the new drugs policy should come up very soon. So now I think the next week, the, uh, the uh, social department, the health department, the home department, they have jointly uh, and constituent committee and new drugs policy has, uh, will be coming soon. I think in the month of end of and part of the October. So now, what a new drug policy? It is like mainly for drug demand reduction treatment. So proper standard certifications and standard treatment procedures would be coming yes, up. Yes, but soon. we are a country of over a billion people. I mean, uh, rehabilitation yes is needed. Uh, but again, it comes down to reducing the demand. I can see uh, Dr. Jayanth Kumar there nodding. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. I'm running out of time, but thank you so much for all your valuable inputs. Uh, Dr. Jayanth Kumar there, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sunit Newton, uh, Mr. Farooq Ahmad here in the studios and Sandeep Hanse. But we, let's, hope, let's hope there's a coordinated effort and, uh, and, and the entire Northeast fights the menace together.